What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome resource for two-dimensional trees, and we're gonna talk about how to take trees to a rendering program. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, I wanted to highlight a couple different things. So the first thing I wanted to do is bring in a location. So we're gonna make sure that we have our add location toolbar turned on, and then we're gonna bring in a specific location. And in this case, I'm just gonna bring in a park that's in Monument. Colorado. So we're just going to go to Monument, Colorado, and we're just going to find the park just because it's simple and it's going to allow us to have kind of a location where we might put some trees in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this so that we can bring in this park right here. We'll click on continue. I don't really need the 3D mesh right now. We're just going to use, um, we're just going to use the two dimensional mesh in here for what we're doing right now because we're going to take this and we're going to export it to a rendering program. So we're going to pick this location, we're going to import that site context, and we're going to bring this in. So now we have our park. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to add some two-dimensional diagrams for the trees. And so there's a bunch of those in the 3D warehouse actually. And you can either do a search for 2D plant symbols and there's a bunch of them in here. Um, so you can kind of pick these out. I've actually got some saved to a collection. So if I go to my content, there's a really good one from Robert Pierce AIA that I'm gonna bring in. So I'm just gonna click right this. We're gonna download it and we're gonna bring it into our model. And I don't wanna get like super duper complicated with this. Um, for right now, I just want to add some trees to this scene right here. And for the most part, we're just gonna reuse one or two of these. So I'm just gonna double click in here. I'm gonna do a control C. Then I'm gonna click out and I'm gonna do an edit paste. And I'm just gonna place this tree right here. So the first thing I always like to do when I'm working with trees, um, because we're gonna add a two dimensional tree here in a second to this, so that this has kind of a 3D look without us, uh, without us adding a whole bunch of geometry to our scene. But in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna double click and I wanna make sure, and it is, I wanna make sure that the object origin is in the middle of this object. So when we take this to a rendering program and we swap out those trees, that's gonna be really important. But now I'm just going to place these on top of the trees in here, right? So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. You could scale this up sometimes if you want to. For right now, I'm just gonna create some copies. And remember that what we're doing is we're creating copies of a component in our model, meaning that if we adjust one of them, all of them are gonna adjust, right? So if I double click in here and select this, then scale it up, Notice how all of these instances in here are going to get bigger or smaller. Now, one thing you might wanna think about doing is if you do wanna keep this boneyard copy intact um, or the version that's off to the side, you might wanna take all of these, right click on them and make them unique. Now, if I adjust this, notice how it's just these that are gonna adjust, not this one over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some more copies. We'll come back when I'm done doing that. And so if some of these need to be bigger, you can make that copy of that one unique right here and then scale it up. So if you need some bigger versions of the trees, um, you can create a copy and then scale them up like this from a size standpoint. All right, so now, and this is looking pretty good, right? If we look at this from a top down view right here, we've got our different trees. One thing I recommend with these trees is taking them and putting them all on a tag, right? So just selecting them all, adding a tag, and we're just gonna call this um, trees for right now. We're just gonna put that on here. That way we can toggle our geolocated content on and off if we want to. We can toggle our trees on and off just like this. And a lot of the time what I would do with a site like this is I would trace it. And a lot of the time, if you don't have a smooth curve like this, I might use a tool like uh, like Fredo Spline um, because it allows you to um, create those smoother curves inside of your scene. Oh, and then one other trick you might wanna know about is when you're working with components, like these, say that you drop some of these smaller trees in here and you wanted to swap them out for the larger ones. Well, what you can do is you can use the components section of your tray in order to do that. So 
for example, say that I drop these in here, but this tree, this tree, and this tree all need to be the larger version. Well, if you hop over into the component section of your tray, you can go to the drop down and look in model. And in your model, notice how those trees are all gonna be in here, right? Well, in this case, I can take those and I can select them. Maybe this one might get bigger as well, but you can right click and you can click on the option to replace selected. And notice how it's going to swap those out with the other version in here. That's why it's important for all of these trees to have the origin right in the middle. Um, that way, if you decide that you wanna swap them out, you can do that really quickly um, because they all have their origin in the same place. But now, for these trees, what I wanna do is I wanna add a 2D face me component to them. And we're gonna use a really cool free resource online in order to do that. All right, so this is a website called my.dk. And so it's a website that's run by a landscape photographer. Um, so his name, so his name's Mikkel I. Um, he's a landscape architect and photographer, and he makes these really great two-dimensional cutouts of trees available on his website. So the terms of this are basically you can use them for your visualizations and sections. You cannot use them as freestanding pictures or for ads. You can't take them and sell them, but you can use them in your projects. So. If we click in here, notice how he's got a ton of different tree species in here. And so these are super high quality cutouts. And so say for example, I wanted to bring in this Acer Platinoid days, I, I can't read that. But say I wanted to bring this in, you can just click on this, right? And then you can click again and it's gonna download. Well, then you can take that two dimensional image and you can bring it in. So we're gonna jump back into SketchUp right here. I'm just gonna do a file import and within my downloads, notice how that tree is in here. So we're gonna click on it. And in this case, we wanna bring it in as an image. So we're gonna click on import. We're gonna move our mouse over here. We're just gonna single click and that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter how big we make it yet because we still need to do some stuff to it. So we're gonna start by moving it over here to the middle of this object, and then we're gonna tap the Q key. We're gonna tap the left or right arrow key in order to lock it to the red axis, and then we'll click, click, we'll move our mouse up like this. Now remember, and we want to take this whole object and we want to edit it. So remember that what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we set this object axis to the middle of the base of the tree. And so in this case, notice how this is in here as an image. And by the way, you may wanna bring the size of these down a little bit. You could probably do that later if you wanted to, but this is an image type right now. We need to right click on it and explode it. And then we need to right click on it and make it a component. And I'm just gonna call this large deciduous tree. And obviously, if you were creating a library, you don't wanna use the actual tree name. Um, but in this case, we'll just call it large deciduous tree. You wanna make sure that you set the component axes to the middle of the base of the object, right? So that's gonna go right here. We wanna make sure that blue is up. And we wanna make sure that we've checked the box for replace selection with component. And we wanna do one more thing. Because this is a two dimensional object, we wanna set it so it always faces the camera. So check the box for always face camera and click on create. We're gonna zoom out a little bit. And one thing about this is the orientation of this is off because of the way the object axes are set up. So we're actually going to set this and you can look in your large tool set in order to do this. We're gonna set this object axis so that the green axis is actually facing the camera like this. We're gonna update the component axes. Now, notice that tree is gonna face the camera wherever you go. Now, one thing about this is you wanna double click in here. You wanna tap the E key and hold shift in order to go into um, hide mode. And we wanna hide the edges around the perimeter. So now what we have is we have a two dimensional tree in here. And so what I wanna do is I actually wanna take this tree and remember that we want every one of these objects to have the tree in it. So now that I've got this set up, I can do a control X. I can double click into this object. I'm gonna go ahead and take this object. I'm gonna right click on it and make it a group. And we're just gonna rename that group to 2D 
or uh, tree symbol actually. Tree symbol like this. But then while we're in this group, we want to do an edit paste in place. We want to paste that tree inside of this group. So now every one of these two dimensional, every one of these 2D trees now has a tree inside of it like this. And notice how they're all facing the camera. And so I'm going to pick a couple more of these and bring them in. And then I'll import those. All right, and so one other thing I recommend when you're doing this is let's go ahead and let's hop over into the outliner real quick. So we're going to open up the outliner right here. And notice how within those trees, right, the overall tree is on the trees tag. And so what we can do is we can toggle those completely off, right? But then I also want to go into the components here and I want to make sure that I also have trees 2d face me and trees 2d symbol like this so what you can do is you can take each one of those right the large deciduous tree you're going to put on the 2d face me the symbol you're going to put on the tree 2d symbol so now you have the ability and uh, let's go ahead and do that for all of these trees real quick so within this object, you want to make sure that you've got a group called 2D symbol. But the 2D symbol goes on the 2D symbol layer, the tree or tag, the tree goes on the 2D face me tag right here. And so what that gives us is that gives us the ability to create a top down view where we can toggle on just the 2D symbols and it gives us a 3D view where we can toggle the trees on if we want to do that. And then if we want both, we can toggle them both on. So that gives us a really high quality collection of 2D trees. Now real quick, let's talk about if we were to take this and export it to something like Twinmotion. Um, so you could do this with other rendering programs, but let's open it up in Twinmotion. We'll just create a new scene, delete out kind of our default stuff. And then I'm just going to do an import. We'll bring in that SketchUp file right here. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you keep your hierarchy. That's going to be really important. And then we're going to click on import. All right. So what we've got here is we've got our landscape view and we're going to go ahead and we can get rid of the starting ground and the starting landscape for right now. So we just want our landscape view in here. Well, if we click on these objects, notice how these just got brought in with, I think, just what was on at the time. And so we can test that. So if we go back into SketchUp and let's say that we save this with the 2D symbols on. So I'm going to do a file, save, and then import this. So I'm just going to do refresh. Yeah. So if the symbols are toggled off, when you import the SketchUp file, they won't be imported to Twinmotion. It only imports things that are turned on. In this case, it doesn't really matter um, because what we want to do is we want to pick up all of these different trees and we want to replace them with a Twinmotion tree. So we're just going to go into the vegetation right here and let's go pick a tree that looks kind of like this one. And we can bring it into our model to make sure, um, but let's bring in this red oak tree right here. So this red, red oak tree actually looks pretty good. It's a little smaller, but we might go ahead and scale it up a little bit, all right? So we've got this red oak tree, but what I want to do is for all of the tree 17s, so I'm going to do tree 17 and I'm going to do a search. I want to find all of these. I want to right click and I want to replace them with a red oak. So if I click in here, click on start replacement right here, what that's done is that's replaced every one of those trees with a red oak tree. And for whatever reason, I'm not really sure why it looks like it moved them around just a little bit, but with these selected, you can just kind of click and drag this and reposition them where you want them right here. But you can also adjust things like the age of those trees like this. So we've replaced those with uh, 3D trees. So now we want to do the same thing with our tree 27. 
uh, number one. And so we're gonna do a tree 27 search. We'll do the same thing. We wanna take this tree, replace all of the shadow number ones with a little short pine tree. So we can go with these little spruces right here. We're gonna click on start replacement and you can adjust the size up or down like this. And then again, you just wanna look in here and make sure that they're all kind of aligned. So I'm not sure why it isn't just dropping these in here with the object axes the way that we wanted them to be, but that's okay. Um, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the tree 27 shadow twos. We're gonna take them, right click and replace. We'll actually use these spruces again, but we'll make these a little bit bigger right here. But now within our rendering, we've got three dimensional trees instead of the two dimensional trees that we had before. So it's actually not a super complicated workflow once you get into it, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about using a method like this to use trees in your models? So if you do want to learn more about SketchUp workflows and how to use the program, make sure you check out my course. I'll link to it on this page. Um, that's a great place to go to get help and really learn what you want to learn. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.